I'm very happy to present today uh, uh, many interesting words with Scholt Feher. Uh, and uh, uh, Scholt Feher uh, as start, the name uh, uh, sounds very rom uh, very Hungarian, because it uh, is. <laughs> even for me as a Swiss. <laughs> okay. And and please present what you're doing, where you're coming from. Uh, say some words. Uh, 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 yeah. Yeah, with with pleasure. My name is Jolt Feher. I'm coming from Hungary, from Budapest, from a lovely capital city. And I'm running a company which actually deals with something very fantastic: predicting the future predicting the future behavior of people, uh, employers, employees, talents or non-talents, everyone who is in the company, we're working with people, assessing them. And our assessment is really angling that mm, to help companies to make better people-related decisions. And this is where I've devoted my life in the last uh, six years. We are developing this company. We are already in 10 countries in, in the region, so we are very much specialized in the region. And we have accessed more than 200,000 leaders, so we have a really huge set of data about people so we can help a lot to companies to make those better people related decisions even they hire or they develop uh, the, the talent force this sounds very impressive uh, but uh, it sounds very theoretically okay so uh, <laughs> please tell us some practical possibilities some 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 uh, uh, testimonials okay so most of the business leaders who we came across, especially those ones who are, who are already running a successful company at 20 years, they say they know who to hire because they feel it. This is their, their guts. They have so much experience to do so. And we actually we prove them that they're not necessarily right because there are so many so-called unconscious biases within the, 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 the people, within the leaders. Unconscious biases means that what we think is good for us is going to be good for everyone or what we think that we are good at something that shall be something which is going to be acceptable or it's a must to have for someone who we hire. And uh, something very practical example, you know, sales positions, for instance, I mean, one of the most important in every company. And based on our study, uh, just or even just a general observation from people, they think that uh, a very open, sociable person who is the star of the room, who is, um, who is the best in telling jokes and so on and so forth, are the best salesperson. And statistics shows that from the personality element we usually look at, this is the least important. Wow. Something is more important, which we call prudence, when somebody is not only able to open the door, and offering the product, but also going to be able to listen to the customer, understanding it, but still the process should drive everything. So if somebody is able to open a sales negotiations, but not able to close, they're not going to be successful. So for instance, selection of salesperson should not focus on too much on necessarily on someone outgoing and you know the center of attention person, but someone who is able to lead a certain process. And that is just something very practical, which we many times we feel that, that uh, people or generally companies making wrong assumptions about this and data proves something else. Uh, we are speaking uh, about the field of talents, about the field of skills, competencies, qualifications. Uh, very interesting and I think very future oriented. So. Or even, even already here, uh, even, even today and even last couple of years, uh, these phenomena, these words are flying around and I think uh, this is the time that everyone takes really good care of these issues. Um, uh, we know it, uh, every society is based on knowledge these days, so it's not the machine, not to buy the best machine, not to buy the best land, but to have the best employees are going to make um, a business successful or not. So you have the right people on the bus, so to say, is essential. This is, this is over, you cannot do anything else but to have the right person on the bus. And whether or not you're looking for a shop assistant or a CEO, for every specific job, there are very well-defined competencies which matters and actually distinguish between the worst performers and the best performers. And actually, for yourself, finding out what are those competencies which would matter for you. For instance, as I said earlier, for salespeople, rather prudence and process orientation might be more important that you should start to, to tackle those. And actually, you don't need to start from, from large and from data analysis and all those already at the interview where, you, where you're asking the first set of questions from these individuals, you can very easily do it. Even if you just you know, run a, a local grocery store in the corner and you're looking for a shop assistant, asking the right questions matters. Not just general things like everyone asks what are you going to do in five years and things like that. But for instance, we know that let's say 
for a shop assistant, it's also quite important to have a people orientation in customer service. So you should ask for stories from this individual's life when he or she was acting customer oriented. A very exact detail oriented example, because if the person is going to be able to come up with those uh, answers and with those sentences, then it's already justifying one of the most important uh, sentences in our business, which says mm. that past, be uh, past behavior predicts best future behavior. Because mm. uh, even though we say people change, but they not intend to change that much. Yeah, you said <laughs> identifying them, you said finding them, mm -hmm. the real, the, the good ones, the right ones. Absolutely. So uh, let us speak about the who. Uh, who is a real talent, a real competent person for a specific uh, position? How you can identify them and uh, how you can find them? Of course, there are general, general answers of one of the, the fancier competencies that are out there. And of course, at the same time, it's also quite important that every company itself, every company determines who is going to be the best performers within that company. And there are several ways. What we always suggest if somebody is going really deep in this, to look at three factors. One, looking into the potential of the person. Um, how is that person going to act in the future? Also look into the, to the, um, um, the opinions of the co-workers about that specific person, because that person needs to act well uh, within the certain working environment. And the third option on the third level, let's say, of the matrix is the performance itself. And, and of course, uh, finding the performance indicators is very important for a salesperson. It's easy. If you sell more, you are better than the others. For a secretary, that's maybe, maybe harder to find what are those things. But I think when we are really thinking through the processes and we say that, okay, no delays of paper, arrival of documents, all those items, as again, can be identified for everyone. You don't need to be a large company, even with a small entrepreneurship, you can start. And out of these three areas, obviously, in every area you need to perform the best and then you are qualifying and you can be in the top of the position, whatever we talk about. Are you using them as uh, technologies or what are the technologies uh, 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 to use days, them to f identify yeah. people like that? Uh, th these days, these days, since we have all the technology possibilities, uh, it's recommended for someone already, I would say above, if you already have 50 people, I think it's already worse to use. Uh, uh, technologies for potential, you can do all different uh, online questionnaires, personality testing, cognitive testing, that's millions of out there, very easy to use. For uh, assessing how people think about each other within the organization, you can, you can use 360 degree uh, survey, mm. for instance. And for performance, you just need to look at the data you have. Mm. And here, of course, the key is, is and the most important of this, uh, is that another uh, lovely phenomenon we use in, when we talk about data analytics is that when garbage goes into the system, garbage mm. comes out. So you have to make sure that you are taking, you're looking at those data which makes relevance in here. What we also suggest all the time to look into performance data is that who are the people who are taking the most vacations, who are the people who are coming in late, which in most of the companies is, is not easy, but possible to monitor. And all these obviously putting together in a nice, nicely working human resource management software. I mean, that's, that's the ultimate goal. Mm. And that's, my, that's our ultimate goal mm. for everyone who really take uh, this, all these items uh, heavily into the daily agenda. Why does it worth for a business person to think about this? Uh, we are convincing uh, every uh, company and every leader that from, from a business perspective, making better hiring and making better development decisions actually suddenly making HR not as a cost center but as a profit center. Mm. Because if you know that you are not only hiring mediocre people, you are, you are okay with everyone who comes because we know that these days it's really hard to find an IT person or find even cleaners or find uh, workers in, 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 the line, in the line work and so many of are not, not here. We know it, it's a big, big issue here but I really I'm really a believer that finding the right person makes sense from business perspective. We have loads of data where we prove that uh, hiring better, um, even call center agents 
who are actually, actually that's another uh, tip uh, for someone who is, is in the business that maybe over there, maybe not, even, not competency, but motivations are going to be an important mm -hmm. element. So when you have loads of data and you can analyze and you can make sure and you can show that who are the people that are performing better, then you can put a dollar figure next to it. And this is what we usually do, that we say, okay, if you hire this type of people, we can see that based on your data, you are going to have X uh, percent higher revenue or profit. Very good. I have noted what are easy, cheap and quick ways for even a micro company to do it better in this. Uh, again, I think it's, it's very important, uh, e even if, if somebody have no budget to, to run you know, assessments or, or other things, but they, for sure they have data about their people. And if they making a good track record of people who they hired, as I said, again, let me use the shop assistant uh, uh, example. If, if they find out that who was the guy who was performing the most, and if, you, if they look into the areas of, of uh, what was that person's specific behavior, how that person acted, uh, what, um, um, what was the characteristics of that person taking vacations, sick leaves, and all those things. If, if, if you look into this data and you analyze it for yourself and make sure that the next time when you hire someone, you would like to hire someone who was as similar to that successful person as possible, then you're already making a better step. And again, let me come back to the structural interview. That's a key here, to make sure that you really properly uh, prepare yourself for an interview, and you already have maybe five, six questions would be enough, but very detailed and very action-oriented. Mm. And always think about this factor that if somebody was acting in some way, which you expect, very likely they're going to act the same way for your organization. This, is, this doesn't cost anything, just for someone sit down a little bit, think through the processes. Mm. So that what you are telling us is not only something for uh, huge companies with human resource uh, 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 departments who are very uh, big. Mm, absolutely. absolutely. It's also for small absolutely. companies and absolutely. Uh, uh, entrepreneurs. Totally. And, and, and you know what? Uh, my, my firm beliefs uh, in the market is that for them it's, it's, most, it's more, even more important because when you have 1,000 people, you can make some mistakes in the hiring. If yeah. you have 50 bad hirings, okay, you survive. But when you run a small car repair shop and you have only two assistants and both of them are bad, you're going down the business. You're going out of business. So it's even more important. And unfortunately, I know it's not easy on a day-to-day -day basis to think about this, but I, I know because data tells that, that following these processes is even more important for the small companies. Let, let me just uh, bring in one more example, just going to the practicalities. We work a lot with small IT companies, uh, like 20, 30 people IT companies, who, who uh, typically you don't think that they're coming to us, uh, to HR consultants, but they do because they have a big problem, they have lots of work and they would like to extend the organization, but they don't find good middle management level. Because what they do, that they are, hire, they, they are promoting their best professionals to be leaders. And we perfectly know that talking about competencies, you need different competency set for a professional and different for a leader. And, and for them, it's, it's a life for that issue to make sure that they can grow the organization. For my last questions, I want to focus the eyes into the future and uh, want to have a look to the key and core competencies for business leaders in the future. Mm -hmm. What are your recommendations as an expert? Uh, which key and core competencies you see are very important for the very near future and for a middle future? Mm -hmm. Uh, the near future is already here from this perspective and the big it's today. Absolutely, it's already <laughs> today or even yesterday. Yes. Uh, it's the digital competencies. Yeah. And digital competencies which actually requires a little bit different set of leadership skills. And it's very tricky because so far we said that a leader has to be emotionally very stable, that person needs really high ambition to go forward and know to where go, to go to middle level of, 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 um, of let's say, personal orientation and middle high level of, of prudence and day-to-day and -day processes. What comes into the picture is really to be open and be uh, strategy driven and be open to always to new ideas and always to change. And the problem comes with a possible contradiction, which sometimes you can even see it in, in different advertisements, job advertisements, when somebody is looking for an extremely punctual, creative person, you don't find too much of those. Mm. But still, from leadership perspective, very likely you need to find those guys. Yeah. And that's going to be a big challenge yeah. for everyone. These days when startups are ruling the hype of the economies and we already see that multinational companies realizing this. And within the big 
multinational structure, they're creating small laboratories of startups and they're hiring desperately these, these set of people. So besides obviously all the knowledge of IT, which uh, for sure is going to drive. So if anyone wants to change career, it's time to start to learn coding. That's going to be job for sure for 100 years to go. Mm. But from competencies and this very specific openness and at the same time still keeping high level of emotional intelligence and, and still the daily process management. It's, it's a tricky one. It's a tricky combination, but this is what's going to be needed. Okay. Many thanks. Thank you very much. So, Scholt Feher was a very competent uh, um, uh, TV show with you in this di direction and uh, I'm happy that uh, I've pleasure. learned and I'm sure uh, many people as well. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much.